<laughs> you know the one I'm talking about, right? So I, don't I bought that spandex type suit so that I could ha- be just ahead for Halloween, right? But then I put it on once and I'm like, whoa, this is way, way too form fitting. You know what I mean? And then I even put on shorts. And then By I the put way, on shorts and I'm like, this is still too form fitting. So I never wore it again. But Andy had you wear it, right? That those I'm and wearing it didn't jeans. work. I am wearing jeans under the spandex. I for the record. That. For the record. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Fox 12 Weather Podcast. Today is Wednesday, September 18th, and this is episode 117. I'm meteorologist Jeff Orzron, joined by meteorologist Katie Suniga. Hey Katie. Good morning. And chief meteorologist Mark Nelson. Hey Mark. Good morning guys. How's everybody doing? I'm still waking up. Just waking up. Katie did the late show last night. She did the 11 Mm -hmm. o'clock because me and old Mark put her on the schedule for the 11 o'clock this week. How'd it yeah. go? How'd it what go, Katie? You all right? I, it's when you have kids in school getting home <laughs> after midnight and then getting up the next day to get them for school. So it's, it's a little rough. What time do your kids wake <laughs> up, by the way? Uh, it depends. Sometimes yeah. seven, sometimes a little after. Actually, a little before. Yeah. So 645-ish. Oh, Mark, you're just such a mean guy. You're a taskmaster. Yeah. Is that the word? <laughs> so mean. Um, I am working on getting this presentation <clears throat> shared over. Why don't you guys stretch Talk a little amongst bit ourselves? Here. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. Um, you know, what's the weather doing? You know, when I got up, it was sunny and now it's partly cloudy. So, of course, the first thing I'm sure you, everybody else listening does this too. You immediately with your morning coffee, look at the satellite image and I could see. I'm sure Jeff is going to share one with us, but you can see we're kind of partly cloudy. It feels yeah. like fall. Yeah, well, yeah. it depends on where you're located, of course. Um, it was like it cleared a little bit, and then it just, we're right back in it. So, yeah, I'll show you what I pulled satellite imagery-wise in a bit. But, yeah, uh, we got some things to update you on. Oh, we sure do. Yeah, well, we, we do. do. <laughs> um, well, of course, we've got some baby photos because we have yes. some great news from Camilla. Um, fall has arrived. We're going to go over the forecast, some fire season stats. I updated that this morning, Mark, from the morning briefing. Oh, mine just wasn't good enough once again. Of course not. Detail oriented. That's good. Very, very minor update. Um, Nothing crazy. (laughs) Uh, We have an update on uh, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. We'll see where we're headed as we trend into fall and hopefully, well, I'm not going to say anything just yet. I don't, I I shared what my thoughts were. (laughs) And if I wanted winter weather or not last week, and Mark got mad at me. So, um, mean old man. And then, uh, yeah, uh, some viewer photos, and I will be saying goodbye to Fox 12. And this is going to be my, this is, yes. Breaking it, news, folks. I know. This is, so I, I broke the news on social media last week. This is going to be my final week at Fox 12 Oregon, final podcast as well. Uh, I may make an appearance later on down the road, but, um, what? Saying, saying goodbye. Oh, I see. We're hoping yeah. so. Say so, goodbye to TV news. Altogether. Yeah, so we're going to cover all that later. We just didn't want it. We didn't want. I, I said to Jeff I, in the text, I said I don't want it to be weird, like all through the podcast, like oh, I'm going to cry. But uh, so yeah, so Jeffy's leaving, and we got a good look back and some thoughts about what he's going to do, and um, yeah, so that's your yeah. little teaser for the end, for sure. So this is oh. this is probably the biggest news though yes. in terms of our weather team. Uh, long time coming. Camilla had her baby um, two weeks and- early. Two yeah. weeks early. That's right. Um, and I mean, you guys probably have been in a bit more communication since you work mm-hmm. with alongside her, um, Katie, especially because you threw a yep. baby shower for her. Um, so yeah. I'll let you guys take it away. Didn't she say, Katie, like two days in, maybe she said that to Amel. She said something like, oh, I'm already bored. You know, Camilla, she's always doing something, got to take a run, whatever. And she's like, yeah, I had the baby. And uh, she didn't mean bored of having being a mother, but she meant like, OK, Staying what am home. I going to do now? Yeah. Well, and I, so I, I gave her a little warning that, you know, sometimes in the beginning, the babies are still on mama's melatonin. And then once they get a few weeks in, mama's wears off and they have to start developing and producing their own. And so life can flip upside down and they just aren't sleeping and the patterns are changing. And so we've, we've been chatting back and forth about some Good. things. I've been trying to give her her space and not be, you know, I know it all mom, but when she has questions, I try and give her my perspective and what worked for me and things. <laughs> like that so i think she's settled in pretty well she's doing great yeah, so he's you, adorable 
His name is Enzo, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that they named Enzo after <laughs> El Nino Southern Oscillation? Or... No, because it's that. with a Z and instead of an S. But Enzo, still, like Enzo Ferrari. Yes. I had to I mean, of course, I knew the answer, but I had to bring it up. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. if she if she spelled it with an S, then I would have. <laughs> yeah. Yes, fully. But I think both her parents are full blooded Argentinian. I think. Yeah. Is that what she said? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so, look, at that oh look at that! Oh. Enzo is super cute. I'm so and, and Camilla reports that the entire family is doing well. Everybody's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, we're happy to hear that, and I'm sure they're riding on a high right now, but. Uh, Katie knows this. Mark, you know it as well. And I recently found this out. Those first few months, they're Are rough. Woo wee! It, I mean, it's tough. It, of course, it varies from family to family, but um, I wish them the best of luck. Uh, and baby to baby, because my first one was extremely different from my second one. So just mm. because you've had one doesn't mean you know what to expect. <laughs> Yeah, but this yeah. baby's cute, and we know it's going to yeah. be an athlete. He is going to be an athlete, no doubt about it. Um, He's already ran marathons. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's I know, true. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, world's youngest uh, Iron Man potentially. Yep, pretty much. Uh, so, anywho, um, great update, and uh, Camilla should be back sometime early next year, is what I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Generous. We have a generous. The company has a generous, uh, vac, um, not vacation, family leave policy. So uh, yeah, she won't be back till after Christmas. But for for a couple of years, I've been saying, hey, let's see if we can get you a little bit of time off at Christmas. Well, now <laughs> she's not going to be around for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, or Veterans Day, <laughs> or the go. New Year. Yeah. So yeah. congratulations to Camilla and congratulations to Johnny. Um, all right. So let's see. Fall has arrived. I think you've probably. Um, mm -hmm. observe that we talked about that a bit last week in the podcast. We've had some nice, crisp, cool mornings, had a little bit of rain yesterday and overnight and, um, afternoons have been pretty decent though. So we're going to get right into that part of the, the podcast here. Here's a look at how September has fared so far. We're over halfway through the month now and eh, running a bit warm for a typical September. Mark, you tallied this up. I trust that these stats are Ooh. accurate. I Actually, hope. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to Katie. I'm trusting that they're accurate too because I snapped these, Katie. I could see on the file update time yesterday evening mm -hmm. you had updated the 2.3. Yep, I did it yesterday <sighs> after the temperatures came in on the seven o'clock. So, folks, this is how errors happen. One person makes it, or you assume that one person did it correctly, and then you and then you're wrong, and then the next guy that uses your graphics are wrong. Yeah, yeah. but Katie no, did I it have right, my so we're all good. My Excel spreadsheet and all you the do. formulas and everything, and so. Yeah. Unless something changed overnight and the overnight temperature, or the cool temperature is different, it should be mm, right. No, I don't think it was because it was a pretty cloudy night. Right. Um, yeah. It's pretty warm. Yeah, um, that's what I figured. So, And you know so me, I'm good. just coasting now. So there's no way that I check these. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeff is uh, on cruise control. He is <laughs> checked out. Not really, but no, kind of. No, I'm not. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. Um, so anyways, True. let's go over some of the stats if you're just listening to the podcast. You know, in the first week of September, we had that mini heat wave where temperatures rose into the 90s and we actually ended up hitting 102 on uh september 5th this graphic we're showing you just shows the high temperatures this is an average though of highs and lows when we come up with where we stand in terms of uh comparing to a normal september the coolest day was actually yesterday which was if you're just listening to this podcast and it's a little late september 17th our official high was 65 at pdx i checked it was 67 down in salem so we had a cloudy day some late day shower boy it took a while for those showers to arrive didn't it you know yeah. what i was telling the uh, gang uh, pete and riel our anchors i said you know what if this was winter we had an upper level low, as you'll discuss in detail sliding down the coastline in winter we probably have an easterly wind at the same time we were waiting for moisture to arrive in the afternoon and i said this just would have been a snow disaster with messaging because <laughs> early on we would have had we what, what okay so we're recording this wednesday it happened tuesday afternoon right on Sunday, we would have been saying, hey, we could get up to four inches of snow, four or five inches of snow are possible on Tuesday. And then on Monday, we would have ramped it down to, okay, maybe an inch or two. And then there would have been all this buildup to flurries and maybe a quarter inch on the west side of the metro. So people that say you can never get snow forecast right. Well, the same thing happens when it's above freezing. That just happened yesterday. Be, off the, been the roads morning. Be off the roads before the morning commute. Yeah. Rain and everybody, rock would, until seven. everybody would have been waiting and waiting and waiting like, oh, there's flurries. We've got flurries out in Forest Grove. Oh, gosh. Uh, that makes my head spin just thinking about the upcoming winter. Yeah. 
Um, I look forward to listening to your guys' forecasts. Great. <laughs> uh, anyways, this is uh, a, just a view of 36-hour <laughs> rainfall totals. I pulled these probably around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning after all the rain was – all that rain wrapped up. It was so much. Two hundredths of an inch of rain in Portland. Can you believe it? I, I didn't realize we had a second hundred. Yeah. yeah, we only had one when say. I left. Yeah, complete, yep. complete soaker out there. Mm -hmm. um, parts of the coast and coast range, though, did end up with quarter to a half an inch of rain, a little bit more in some cases. So, um, yeah, that works. That was yeah. And you know, I was looking at that. That actually, from where things were developing, in my mind, that really verifies and checks out because we were saying along the coast and to the south, that's where mm -hmm. we would see a majority of the accumulation. So to the southwest and to the northeast, it would be lighter. So it did right. end up falling how we were talking about it. Right. And, and it all had to do with the tra trajectory of the system. And we'll mm -hmm. reveal in a second that that system is well to our south now. It kind of uh, dove down along the coastline. But here's what Mark was alluding to a little while ago. In some cases, we've cleared out. In other cases, we're still dealing with some low clouds. So that's visible satellite imagery just after sunrise this morning, um, showing those low clouds trying to clear out across western Oregon and southwest Washington. Let's take it to a wider view here. By the way, no smoke. It's nice to see that here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. And uh, there you go. You, can you guys, can you guys see it? Oh, we, so Katie, crazy. she already ID'd it. I can tell it's like, it's like me if I go into a donut shop. And you're just like, oh, it's just, it, I, I know. You know, you look at them and you go, beautiful. ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Goes 18 satellite imagery sh revealing that low pressure oh. system diving southward along the California coastline. Um, and that's why it brought more rain to Southwest Oregon and Northwest California. Um, and in the wake of that system, you can already see a ridge building over the Eastern Pacific Ocean as those clouds kind of drift up to the Northeast. And that should leave us with some pretty nice weather. Um, so let's get into the upper level pattern. So this is the oh, yeah. uh, upper level pattern, geopotential heights showcasing anomalies, warmer than normal versus cooler than normal heights. And you can see that ridge building already offshore of the Pacific Northwest and pretty obvious where that upper level low is um, right along the California coast. So that, sh that checks out. Um, that system will continue to drift to the south into the east over the next couple of days. And that ridge will kind of just nudge its way in, but it's not like it's going to build overhead any over the next few days or so. So we're looking at some really pleasant weather. Um, zonal flow, if you will. That's exactly what I was just thinking that, is right there. And that was your band that name, was right that's right that was my band name back in that's right i remember right, that for Flora. you jeff yeah <laughs> zonal you. flow Gosh, that's right oh my goodness yeah, i had a few bands back in the day um i'm sure anyway, yeah <laughs> at um, my previous job we had a joke that we were going to come up with a band called three seconds light as a joke <laughs> to when you come out of a break and you're, you're going into a break and you're producing and you're trying, for those of you who don't know, you know, you always do your timing because you have hard outs at the end of a newscast. And so our joke was, our band was going to be called three seconds light. So. <laughs> it's like three doors down. Exactly. But but just a little different. Light. <laughs> um, all right. So this is, so I'm taking you through the next few days, you can see that upper low um, just kind of drifts over Southern California and the desert Southwest. So this is Friday, late day. The ridge is kind of building in kind of nudging its way into the Northwest Saturday into Sunday. And um, what this doesn't really reveal is the pattern, the jet stream starts to turn a bit more wavy over the Pacific ocean. So um, you can kind of see it over the, like the top left corner of the screen there, a uh, trough starts to dig in and the ridge starts to amplify as we head into early next week. Oh, down nice. So it Look starts to build overhead over the Pacific Northwest Monday into Tuesday. So sometime between Monday and Tuesday is when we're probably going to see the warmest weather um, over the next week or so. And then we start to see that trough kind of digging in out of the west. Um, so this is next Wednesday. We're kind of in a progressive pattern all of a sudden, um, by the way. The ridge just kind of slides oh, off to the east. Jeff, hold on. You can't just sit here in Portland, Oregon and say we're in a progressive pattern <laughs> in these, in these We've times. We've done this before. Yeah. Yes. So... <laughs> Progressive, it can be used in a political way, yes, but it can also, it just means like kind of moving forward, things are moving along. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in this case, we're saying that things are kind of moving along. Things aren't locked in place. Yeah. I like a progressive ridge. <laughs> Watch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a transient ridge. Another interesting oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. No. Remember, words are used in many different ways, folks. Don't That's judge. Right. Yeah. 
So what we're <laughs> saying is the ridge is not stalling. We're not going to be looking at an extended period of time of abnormally warm weather. The ridge just kind of slides along. And I think mid to late week of next week, things might start to get a little bit more interesting. There is some chaos in the forecast. Uh, we'll kind of dive into it right here. Um, so I would say for the next three to five days, the weather is going to be really nice. That's what um, the 850 millibar temperatures are showing, somewhere between maybe like 7 to 12 degrees Celsius at 5,000 feet. That puts us kind of in the Goldilocks zone, you guys. Right. Um, but you notice things start to get a little bit more chaotic 7 okay. to 10 days out or so. Um, you know, the operational European model, is. this is from overnight, by the way, is showing you know, significant ups and downs in the forecast. Um, the ensemble outlook is a little bit more steady, uh, but there is some significant warming going on around Tuesday of next week on this run. And Mark, you kind of requested this last time we were on. Um, are you going to show the raw temperatures from the Euro ensemble? So I figured I'd just slap it in there. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. One, um, one last time here. Yeah. And you can see that Tuesday, quick warm up, but because of that progressive pattern, we're probably looking at, you know, a bit of a cool down right beyond that. And that's an ensemble average. So, of course, what you had just seen in that last graphic, there's a lot of uh, there's lots of ups and downs. So it's averaging out all those ups and downs. You know, sometimes they're all the most of the ensembles are in pretty good agreement. And we can say, oh, that is about what's going to happen. I would say looking at that beyond about Monday or Tuesday, it's like, well, it could go well below that or above that. That's what we call an average. But I'll tell you this, when you start to get that jet stream, that active jet stream just to mm -hmm. our north, we're starting to get into fall and there are competing air masses. It's it's pretty important to lean on this guidance, I would say, because I you, agree. Can, you can run into some serious trouble if you're looking at those operational runs closely. Yeah. Flinging wildly about like a fire hose. That's right. Um, but notice that like, you know, over the next for, you know, five to six days, the GFS operational and ensemble outlook, those lines are like very close together. So there's good agreement through about Tuesday, Wednesday that, you know, we're going to see steady weather temperatures in the 70s during the afternoons, eventually probably climbing upper 70s to low 80s early next week. And then, yeah, things get wavy. Things get a little bit more chaotic beyond that. Um, but similar conditions for the GFS ensemble outlook. Highs probably in the 70s up until about Tuesday. And then I just wanted to show you the precipitation outlook. Boy, uh, not nothing too certain about the precipitation outlook. I mean, I, I don't see much agreement in the ensemble members. I mean, I see a little something, something maybe around Wednesday, Thursday of next week as that ridge kind of moves off to our east. Perhaps a trough digs in and we get a little wave of moisture. Something uh, like today, yesterday. Or more. Maybe well, a little bit more. This yeah. looked like more when we or first nothing. saw it too. So you know. Yeah. So yeah. That's... Go ahead. I was just gonna say when I look at that big picture is yeah it's not like a guaranteed dry the next ten days but there's more dry than wet in the ensemble so uh -huh. something could pop up in the next two or three days we could suddenly get a trough drop over us later on <clears throat> you know beyond our seven day forecast we just can't quite see it yet it's still in the chaos yeah but the chaos will come together and be get organized at some point. So that's the European Ensemble Outlook, 50 members. <clears throat> we like to look at that first. The 30 GFS Ensemble members are hinting at maybe something around Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Not great agreement about Sunday and Monday. And then it's all chaos beyond that. So National Blended Models Temperature Outlook. This is something I like to lean on a bit more. I know you guys do as well in yeah. the short range, five to seven yeah. days out. Um, it looks awfully similar to our seven-day forecast with highs in the 70s. They get a bit warmer maybe into the weekend and early next week. And this is the updated seven day forecast as of this morning, because of course Mark did it yesterday and I had to make some minor adjustments. Let's see what he changed there. <laughs> Excuse me. It's early. Um, let's see. Oh, I see. Oh, he's got temperatures one degree apart. Did he do that just to irritate? No. Um, no. You know what I did? I have 74 back to back. That's a rarity. In a that's true. You don't that like I've... that. And I don't like the one degree apart stuff. That said, that is a nice, clean look from Saturday through Monday, isn't it? 76, 77, 78, a little ramping up. Yeah. Oh, well, four, oh, 49. There's a nine in there. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, that Mark. was in there last night. Just go it? 48. Oh, I'm oh, sure it was a 48 or a 50. Here's the thing. It we'll was too 50. cold. It was a four. It was a four. Bump. I remember that. <laughs> I had to start but, trending it up a bit. But then 50 does not imply, you know, you kind of want it to look a little cooler than that, right? Exactly. That's why you went a 49. Yep. It's all psychological, folks. Totally. And, yeah. 
Okay, that's fine. You know what? This is fine, Jeff. I'm okay. Sometimes, though, I'll see warming trend, and I'm like, is it actually going to be a warming trend, or is it going to be a quick marine layer day in between? Mm. No, I, I felt I felt pretty confident. Warming trend, Saturday through Tuesday, we'll just gradually ramp it up. Um, I don't know, though. We'll have to wait and see, but Tuesday, we might have to bump that up a few degrees. Yeah, maybe. We'll kind see. Kind of getting towards the end of the season where nobody cares that much, but uh, we try to be accurate. Oh, they care, Mark. They care a lot. Well, I mean, is it going to be 80 or 86? It's like a... Right. I know. 86 does not feel like 86 in June. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, my least favorite subject, fire season stats. Uh-huh. So, you know what? I'm just going to pass this along to the chief and Katie, if you want to uh-huh. chime in a little bit. So, we burned about two point. It's actually 2.18, 2, 2,180,000 acres in Oregon and Washington. Most of that is in Oregon, by the way. Cliff Mass, professor up at the UW, he has a weather blog, and he, how he posted what a dead dead weather, or dead fire season it was up in Washington, mm. which is kind of true. It was below average up there. So it was all about Oregon. It was all about the lightning strikes interspersed with the heat. And I looked at the numbers. I had to go find old... Forest Service reports. That's the highest acreage burn since at least 2000, and I don't, I don't have stats from before 2000. You know, going into the summer, I remember the snowpack was not great up in Washington, and we were like, "Uh oh, what's That's Washington's right. fire season going to be like?" And they've had their fair share of lightning. I mean, some of the complex, the thunderstorm complexes that have come through Oregon have moved up into Washington. So it is interesting that they've had such an easier fire season than down they south. had some troughs come through that were just north of us which probably helped knock things down a few times uh that makes sense for sure yeah. in august they did yeah they had showers at times i think in august up there when we really didn't down here it's amazing though what an extreme flip we've experienced in fire seasons from last year to this year right next graphic yeah I'm moving on this is why i like yeah. to control things jeff but there we go i had to make that final point go ahead <laughs> Ooh, this is a nice looking graphic, isn't it? I wonder who made this one. So this shows the six mega fires in Oregon this year. What are those great lakes? What are those? <laughs> those are burned areas. You know, I remember I had that at one point is yellow. The burned areas were yellow instead of black, but I kind of thought black and black and go together. I mean, you know, the, the black color. That, if you're, if you're listening, it's charred landscape. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Remember right. sometimes the news people would put in a... Uh, uh, and, and and then there'd be a note in the newsroom because somebody in a script for news, not weather, would write, oh. 14,000 acres were destroyed. It's like, well, it's not really destroyed. It still exists. It's not, you know, you know, mop and a doofer didn't just disappear. There was a fire that went through that area. Yes. But yeah, I don't mean to laugh, but it's like news yes. people. Ugh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's not okay. a laughing subject, but it is repetitive every okay keep the going. business can be very funny yeah uh, we had a killer otter or something yesterday oh a, a de- oh yeah dangerous otter the tease was something else what was that katie i actually the... don't know i was working on graphics so i was it was a scary out. otter strikes out or something like that anyway <laughs> it was good i had in my 30 years i had never heard the otter all right so i digress but that's part of the fun of the podcast um so yeah six mega fires all in central and eastern oregon uh Five of six of those all started in that hot week where we had lightning in uh, July 10th through the 17th. Mm, that long heat wave, the long duration heat wave. Yeah. Yeah. As I recall, that was only, might be one of the only long duration ones we had east of the, east of the Cascades. It was really about yeah. early to mid July over there. So that's that graphic. Next. Oh, oh. Come on, Jeff. He's moving along. We got things to talk about. Hey, I like to see your faces. I have to switch over quickly and then. All right, we're back. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, 24 large fires in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, only a hundred. Oh, that's what you changed. Good job there. Only 125 acres burned in the last like 24 hours. Yeah. So basically, they're barely burning right now. Smoldering. Um, some yeah. smoldering. So, you know, we've had the cooler temps and the showers helps. And in the next seven days, sure, we don't, as of now, we don't see a soaking rain. But we also, we're not going to get a heat wave this late in the season. We could have a long period of hot, dry weather that could kind of activate the fires again. We don't really see that. We sure don't see widespread lightning, which typically doesn't happen this time of the year. Oh, it's already gone. So Jeff wants me to talk faster. Hey, I got to go. The last point was, don't tell me, <laughs> but this is like a cognitive test. That last point that just disappeared, it was lightning, east wind, no dry and dangerous east wind. Nice yes. job, Mark. I his passed the cognitive his, test. His brain is still functioning, folks. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. All right. Well, and real quick, going back to your point about most of them being in Oregon and not Washington, if you saw that, 19 of them were in, in Oregon and only five were in Washington. Right, right. 
So that just kind of supports that they're not right. as bad as we were. All right, back to Camilla's baby Enzo update. <laughs> oh, I was going to make the joke if you didn't, Jeff. Oh, thank you, thank Did, you, Katie. Were you the one that asked about that yesterday, or was that somebody else? About what? They asked if if she specifically named the baby after <laughs> Enzo El Nino Southern Oscillation, the acronym. Was it? No, no, it wasn't me. I think that was Corey, our director. Yeah. I mean, our producer. I don't know. Inside baseball. But the That's point is, good. somebody did ask about that. If I also, re- we also have another meteorologist in town. Oh, we'll just say it. This is a podcast. Matt Safino, I think his son might be named Enzo as well. That actually, yes. I think, is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Does, but does he spell it with an S or a Z? Z. I think he told me that Z. when I met him at that June conference, that weather conference. And- yeah. Phoenix. Why we had a weather conference in Phoenix in June, I'm still bewildered by. Well, they have but AC. That's, yeah, but the, the I was burning my feet on that asphalt running to the pool. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. man, that was brutal. All right, so okay. El Nino Southern Oscillation not linked to Camilla's baby. We figure let's get an update now that we're in fall. So We'll ooh. go through this quickly, I think, because uh, right. actually, Jeff, I was almost going to cancel this last night when I was putting just jamming to get this podcast put together before the 10 o'clock show. And I was going to cancel it because we don't get a new um, model forecast really until for another th- three or four days. But anyway, yeah. So, um, so it is, is a little stale. N- no, well, this part is not stale in the end. I pulled it together. It's going to work fine. All right. We just don't need to belabor this thing for, you know, 15 minutes. <laughs> so basically, yes, a La Nina appears to be developing. You can kind of see the cooler than average temperatures right along the equator in the Pacific. I mean, it's kind of a pretty look there. Look yeah. how warm the North Pacific has been for quite a while. Yeah. North of Hawaii. I mean, northwest and northeast of Hawaii. So um, there you go. Okay, next. This just shows the probabilistic outlook for El Nino Southern Oscillation. That's La Nina, which is the cooler oceans. ocean. El Nino's warmer. Um, and this is from NOAA. This is their official outlook. The only update. Oh, no, it is the new one for them. And high probability of La Nina coming up here through the northern hemisphere winter. Yeah. And that's S-O-N, me, should, September, October, November, breakfast. October, November, December, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So a uh, pretty low chance we're going to get El Nino. This is the model plume that's from last month. There's a new one coming up in two or three days. Uh, model plumes basically showing what are the different models showing. If it gets below minus five there, that is La Nina. If it goes above plus point zero point five, that is El Nino. Clearly no model is forecasting El Nino for this winter. It's either going to be neutral or weak La Nina, most likely. Yeah. Um, Which we'll get into a lot more detail as we get into the fall. At least least Katie and I will. Oh, I'm getting sad. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, Katie's great. Don't don't get me wrong, but we're going to miss you, Jeff. (laughs) Katie, don't don't leave. Okay. Keep okay, going, so Mark. wait, did we, can, is this the Euro? So this is the Euro. What you're seeing here is a 500 millibar heights from the Euro seasonal model. There's not only a Euro operational, but there's a seasonal. And uh, this goes from, I believe, November through March. Right there. So, so November is kind of flattish. Yeah, November right here. December, it's going to keep going. Okay, December, a little higher than normal heights. Huh? Oh, and then look at January, February, and March. Oh, what, when, what is with that like time period when we tend to get our winter weather? You know? <sighs> And that does have the canonical uh, view of La Nina. Look how there's ridging well off to the west and there's troughing over the west coast. Yep. Uh, January, February, March. If that was correct, we'd have the classic later winter, you know, lower snow levels at times, cool and wet, great for skiing. This is a Canadian average. Canadian model comes out once per month as well, a seasonal model. And this is January, February, March average. Kind of looks the same, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah, near normal heights or potentially slightly below normal heights. Who knows? And well above normal out in the North Pacific around 160 West, which is our classic oh, okay. location for ridging yeah, if important. we have cold air here, which I don't like. And look at the rest of the United States. I mean, which is typical. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. What else do we have? Ooh, uh, this one. I, I saw this early on this morning when I was looking at what you dropped in here, and I was like, oh, boy, this could be really good for the Cascades. Yeah, uh, this is also yeah, basically the Euro seasonal is going for classic La Nina conditions. Wetter than normal in the Pacific Northwest, drier than normal in California. Do we all recall what happened? Wasn't it the last La Nina? This did not happen. I yeah. think we were, were we might have been average, and then California was way above average. That's when they had some flooding. So that part didn't work out last time. I think like I think. 
there have been many instances in recent memory where the long range forecast does not pan out. I can think of the hurricane season forecast for this oh, year. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's big yeah. So anyways. My point of these graphics is not to point to any one model, but just to say, huh, that's interesting. They're kind of pointing towards a classic La Nina, but um and I do have one other thought that comes from Pete Parsons. He works at uh Oregon Department of Agriculture, Oregon forestry department yeah. and uh, he he has mentioned before he's noticed and this i think this is correct if we have back-to-back -back la nina years we tend to get more classic la nina impacts the first year not the second and that well, and so happened these last two times as i recall that's exactly what i was just about to say didn't we just have three la ninas in a row before we hit the el nino and it oh, seemed right. like that happened that you just said the third year wasn't classic so yeah. that supports that that we had three in a row which isn't normal but the last one was yeah of course small exactly. sample size <laughs> yeah i mean it's important to look back at many years of data to really mm -hmm. see those those trends but we know that pete does that so yeah. um all right uh folks mark <gasps> has thrown some graphics in here um here i'll i'll circle back one your photos in a goodbye yes yeah, so this is my last week at fox 12 oregon um i've been here for five and a half years mark <laughs> Mark, I think you were busy on my Facebook yesterday. Is that right? Gosh, no, like over the weekend, because I'm working, I'm not complaining, but I'm working a, a, like 10 days straight because Camilla you know, kind of left early. Um, I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying I had a lot of spare time over the weekend. And so, yeah, I scanned through your Facebook page all the way back to 2018. So Jeff has been working here, folks, for 5.5 years and in grateful recognition for his five years of dedicated service, <laughs> the great corporation gave him... A nice Piece certificate. <laughs> Back in March. Look, it's signed by Hilton Howell, our chairman and president and CEO. I don't think that's an actual signature, but yeah. What well, do you mean? I, well, I, I don't is. know if he took... Well, It's probably the signature that they put ask. it on digital and then they just add it in. You know, like when oh. you're digitally signing something and your signature is just already in there. He handed it to me personally, <laughs> yeah. for the record. So we have a little story to tell here. Okay, next one. All so right. five and a half years ago, Jeff came to KPTV. You know, I remember, I remember this day like very specifically um, because uh, I was. It was like an evening, afternoon, evening shift. Anne was in there. Anne yeah. took this, Anne took that picture. Actually, we went. Wait, was that the day I was there too? Then, right? Yeah, you were there. <clears throat> I think. Um, I just remember seeing like, gosh, I just the three panel monitors in the weather center. I was. I was like, this webcam network you guys have that we have is unreal. I was so hyped on that. Coming from a station in Waco that had like two or three webcams. You were pretty like... excited. You were all fresh, ready to go. You'd done two years down in Waco, came up here. Remember you went to that AMS meeting the first night and they were arguing about global warming? <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> what do. kind of place is this? I don't get what's going on. And I said, eh, ne never mind. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Good burgers, though, at... uh what's the spot down the street if you mention it then you're that's payola, payola. True. yeah i won't yeah. say it yeah okay uh, but yeah I, I just remember like a lot of interaction i remember alan having interactions <laughs> with alan the right. former engineer at fox 12 and um oh. yeah next picture so then jeff posted this was it last week or two weeks ago last week yeah basically jeff says you know i'm announcing breaking news stepping away from my role here um he's he's jeff says he is truly grateful i'm sure he was about to say that anyway for this chapter in his career, um, last day will be Friday the 20th. Yeah. So, Jeff, I'll let you explain what is next for you. Where are you yeah. going? I've accepted a job at a company called Avon Grid. Um, mm -hmm. They are based out of Connecticut. Their um, parent company is based out of Spain. and uh, But they have an office in Portland. I understand that there's like 300 employees at their office in Portland. It's a, I think wow. they cover like almost an <clears throat> entire floor, if not an entire floor in the Montgomery Park building. Um, but they have... They're a leading sustainability company, so they're trying to help transition our energy to like more renewable energy focus. And they have assets in Central Oregon, um, wind farms, solar farms. I think they have uh, nuclear, some uh, some natural gas. But their focus is on, for me, would be on the solar and wind and, and forecasting uh, for those demands. And so, um, Mark. Katie, you guys know, and I think a lot of you at home also know that I'm very into forecasting, very into the, the science behind meteorology, the data analytics and things like that. And, oh, yeah. Um, it's it's going to be 
primarily like 90% of the time forecasting on the forecast desk and just focusing on helping out the energy traders um, to just really understand how much demand they'll have for wind and solar and things like that. Interesting stuff. Good and stuff. I'm, okay. I'm curious, you might not know now, so maybe you'll have to send me a message after you get in how different your forecasting, because, you know, this is a very specific type of forecasting for TV, right? And we only have like an hour to put it together and we have to, you know, pick the, you know, certain parts of it. So I'm really curious to find out, you know, how that's going to change for you, what you're going to be focusing on, how much time, you know, are you going to be looking at different things? Like I just am dying to hear what that part of it is. That's going to be a whole podcast episode. It yeah. might be. Going to, he is going to come back. I've already asked. Um, the forecast area, from what I understand, is like Mount Adams to Mount Hood, the gorge, and into central Oregon and central Washington. So it's a smaller area to focus on. It's more niche forecasting um, yeah. as opposed to focusing on all the way from the coast into eastern Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'll have a lot more time to forecast because I won't be on TV anymore. So I won't be focused on like, you know, the way I look and the way I'm presenting and setting up yeah. graphics and things like that. It's so, all about the forecast. Can you just wear a baseball cap to work and not shave? Business casual from what I understand. Oh, because you are interacting with energy traders, which I'm sure you'll tell us all about this someday when you come back. But um, yeah, and it's like a whole interesting. All, there are all sorts of people working for that company um, in that office. It's not just the energy traders and meteorologists. Right. So, um, so yeah, I'm, and I'm frankly, I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> so we want to look back. So this is like, you know, you know, Camilla, uh, we're get thinking Camilla, baby Enzo, Katie, when yeah. we, um, when you go to like a memorial for somebody, you know, they bring up the music now. So this is when we would bring up the music for Jeff. Yeah. Okay. The I, sad I could music. I play some music if you What's want. What's that Green Day song? Don't, no, don't do it. We would yeah. get in trouble, but. Hey there, Delilah. No, that's <laughs> yeah. not the one. So, so this is where we look back at Jeff's big career here at Fox 12. He was in a parade with, uh. With Pepper, right? That was yep. early on, I think, right? Pepper, I was. I told myself I would never do that again to Pepper. I've never seen her get in the car and just fall asleep so fast. I mean, she was so like focused on the crowd and so much going on. But yeah, that was the junior parade. That was a year before you got here, Katie. Yeah. So 2021, I believe. Sounds about right. Yeah. And in 2020, you, 2022, you were on the parade route, probably for the Grand Floral Parade. I got this picture. You were interviewing a nice lady on the parade route. So you were that interacting was, no. with the public. That was, that was 2019. Oh, okay. I guess that, that was, was early off. on. Yeah, okay. That was early All on. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Mark zero and one right here. Uh, so there we go. So there's, there's a picture there. Um, Jeff also learned to be a pilot. I'm not, you, so I'm still, so I'm working on it. Yeah, so you know, I um, my wife had our baby back in November. She's she's nine months <clears> old. <throat> I'm actually mm -hmm. going after this. I'm going to do some flying. Um, okay, some, some flying lessons. So I'm going to start chipping away at that. I've I've covered most of my flight hours, but I still have some tests to take and things like that. But it's still on my radar. Um, really excited to get back up in the air. Um, and it's very connected to meteorology as well. Of course, the, the school right. involved. Um, so before you came here. Let's see. You had a nice girlfriend. So during that time, you got married. Yeah. You had a baby. Yeah. Um, you learned to garden too, right there. Yeah. Like, What's up you with you picking? Why do you have to pick the goofy pictures? Well, that's what we do at a, and everybody laughs to bring up the mood. Yeah. By the way, I put. Have you ever been to a memorial service? That spandex green suit was originally Mark's, from what I understand. Okay. Uh -huh. Hey, just so you know, because that is one weird that, and I didn't even <laughs> use that other picture of you, which looks even weirder. <laughs> um, you know the one I'm talking about, right? So I, I bought that spandex type suit so that I could have be just ahead for Halloween, right? But then I put it on once and I'm like, whoa, this is way, way too form fitting. You know what I mean? And then I even put on shorts. And then By I the put way, on shorts and I'm like, this is still too form fitting. So I never wore it again. But Andy had you wear it, right? That those I wore. It didn't jeans, work. I am wearing jeans under the spandex. I for the record. That. For the record. Um, but yeah. And <laughs> Somebody tampered with the the chroma color. So mm -hmm. when I thought I was going to disappear, you then in front of thousands of people, they saw me in this tight green spandex, and that was fine. <laughs> That's what everybody remembers me for. And I don't on. remember what's that other one for. What is, is that? Halloween that was, too? Um, yeah, that was I think uh, the next year. Andy was dressing up, and the it was I think it was like some weird rules during the pandemic. Andy wasn't at goodwill so the goodwill people came to the studio and that's had right. all the outfits and they had outfits for me as well and that's I think great. a couple from my Heinrich. so the, yeah that's um 
yeah, that was a weird one. <laughs> I don't even know what that was, but okay, anyways, next. moving that on. That hair, I swear, that's so funny. There we go. And of course, Jeff, you know, he learned to do lots of things. His life changed as he was here for five and a half years, and he made lots of new friends. There's Bonnie yeah. there. You guys are comparing. What Did somebody have new glasses? What is that picture? Bonnie was wearing glasses. I'm like, what? One day, um, this was, she was filling in on Good Day Oregon. This is before she made the switch over to the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, it's always fun to work with Bon. Um, and then, yeah, I got married while I worked here. You know, early on, this was back in 2021 is when mm -hmm. we got married after having to postpone the wedding. And it was nice to have the entire weather team at that time at the wedding. And that we was have fun. pictures. A lot of fun. And, and framed up those pictures. We have two in the weather center right now. I will be taking one of those. I right figured you would because it had your name on it. So you guys back then, you only had five people? Yes. Yes. Oh. We had less shows. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. Yeah. Is that, why did we have five? I don't know. I don't remember how, what the reasoning was. Well. Yeah. Well, now we have four. <laughs> for a few months at least. Wait, no, we only. Yeah, we have four, four point two five for the next few months. But let's not get into that. I know our scheduling issues. There's a Jeff. good uh, story behind. There's a good yeah. There's a good story behind the the photo of me, Mark, and Brian McMillan. Mark oh, yeah. and I decided to surprise Brian. Was that for his birthday? I forget the occasion. It was just was to just... surprise him. Yeah. So we we took a quick little flight, commuter flight up to Seattle, and dropped in while he was wrapping up his morning show. Um, and we had no you know, idea we were coming. That was great. We had lunch, then we had drinks afterwards at his his uh, place all afternoon. No, and we flew back. And and... We were back by like 8 p.m. Yeah, it was fantastic. I want to do that again, Jeff. Well, the, the goal is I got to get my pilot's license and then we're flying up together. Oh. You want to know something funny? Brian and I, I've known him Parachutes. verbally for years, but we've never met face to face. Really? We even actually worked for the same news director at one point, but just at different times. Ah. So like I've never laid eyeballs on him, but we text and talk all the time. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> He, I think, is still a Portland Timbers season ticket holder. So he may, <laughs> he's he still may hanging on town. there. <laughs> yeah, he may he may be in town at some point soon. Um, so I think that's is that that's it. I think for the pictures. Yeah, I think. That, so I, I just want to say seriously that Jeff, it is has been. It sounds cliche, but it's been a great joy to work with you. I've always admired Jeff's passion. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm a weather geek, but Jeff just seriously goes to the next level. I mean, Jeff is a perfectionist. I'm not a perfectionist. Um, I remember one, here's a good quick story. I remember one day Brian was sitting there with his feet up on the desk. It was a slow weather day, obviously. And he's, he's watching soccer like he always was. And there was something about Jeff in the morning, like Je Jeff was frustrated about something and we were talking about it. And Jeff and Brian said, you know, Jeff just needs to learn to mail it in. And then I said that to you weeks later, like, Je you know, um, Jeff, you should just, you know, mail it in sometimes. And, and Jeff goes like this, like, I don't do that. I mean, Jeff seriously is always, he's always doing his best work. These last few weeks where a lot of people would have said like, yeah, I'm just not in the mood to do this podcast anymore, or I'm not in the mood to do that. Jeff, Jeff is, he's going to stay with it all the way to the end. He's got a passion for weather, passion for other things too. But it's, so I've really appreciated that over all these years. You've taken up the slack when I've been maybe, you know, I wouldn't say lazy, but I'm like, oh, it'd be great if Jeff could do that. Like this podcast, I was kind of doing it and then you took it over. I think it's been great. So I'm really going to miss that. I'm going to miss, you know, when I come in in the mornings, it's like, ooh, Jeff adjusted everything. If I'm in a hurry later that day, I know that Jeff looked over everything because he's detail oriented and just, and just a great guy and a good friend. So it's, I am really going to miss you. I've been really lucky. I've worked under other chiefs in the past, and I've been really lucky to work under you, Mark. Um, just getting to know you, but also getting like a really good sense of how Pacific Northwest weather works. I mean, there's nobody better in this market and probably in the, in the entire Northwest. And um, I don't have the capacity to retain information like you do, uh, but I feel oh, like, yes, you do. But we, I think we complement each other, you know, right. you know, we have I strengths agree. and weaknesses and um, no, and just like, I've never, I've, I've had other bosses in the past, but like your willingness to adjust your schedule and um, work days that you probably don't need to work. Um, I mean, it, you, you lead by example. You're the definition of that. And um, I'm really grateful for the five and a half years I got to work under you. So um, and we are too. And Katie, I know it was kind of a brief stint working with you, but I'm grateful that I'll be still in this, in this area, staying in, in the Portland yeah. Metro area and looking forward to sharing what I'll be doing. Cause I'm not yeah. entirely sure, but I, I have yeah. a general sense and you're a great meteorologist, Katie. And you also have a, 
a great passion for weather. And I know you're going to do great things in this market. I was a fear like we've been together, working together for a year and a half. I think we've only laid eyes on each other in person twice. <laughs> laid eyes on each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, but in, in this business, a year and a half is a long time. So I feel like yeah. I got a good time with you. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And we're very happy that you're staying in the area. Yeah. So we can still mm -hmm. get together for a drink. So that'd no be fun. And we, we love it here in the Pacific Northwest and, you know, it wasn't our original home, but it is now. So, yeah. um, and thanks to everybody that, you know, has followed along, of course. And I'm not going to say the, the generic, thanks for l welcoming me into your home. That's right. You know? Into your living rooms. <laughs> yeah. It's, yes. Classic. Don't that for me. But no, I appreciate everybody sending really kind messages on social media and, um, of course, tuning into the podcast. We've gotten great feedback from uh, viewers about this, and I'm just glad that everybody can learn a thing or two. Um, as we take a little bit more time, but we've got a couple of viewer photos that we're going to wrap up this podcast with. We did have a Aurora Borealis sighting a couple of days yeah. ago, two nights um, ago. So thanks to Cheryl out in Washougal for catching a glimpse of that and taking a picture. It didn't last very long from what mm -hmm. I understand, uh -uh. maybe 10 to 20 minutes. So by the time I was talking about it at nine, like Katie, Katie saw me get all excited. Like, Oh my gosh, I got to push this out on our alert, whatever. And it was nine 30. It seems like it was probably over at that time. Yeah, it's it tends to be when like we start to you know everybody starts to hype it up on social media is when it's a bust. Then it disappears. You know? Yeah, right. And I thought this was a fantastic Ooh. shot. Yeah. This was sent in by one. Jocelyn uh, somewhere between Eugene and Albany. Uh, full full rainbow. Um, well, actually, a, a little bit. Yeah, I do see a double actually. There's a little little double. Oh there. yeah, yeah. Um, great <laughs> lighting there. Um, so thanks to Jocelyn for sending that in out in the southern Willamette Valley. And that about wraps it up, guys. That is the end of the show. That is. In more ways than one. I know. Um, but I, I think, yeah, maybe in the future I'll, I'll be able to make an appearance. And um, I know you guys will hold it down. You, the winter will be minor. It'll, be, it'll just be, there won't be much snow. There won't be much ice. Oh, gosh. So just a, a little maintenance note here. So we're going to skip next week for the podcast. Katie and I have to get our act together. We have to cover Jeff's. Well, Jeff's Jeff and work. Camilla, because she's out and Jeff's out. So it's yeah. just, it's the Mark and Katie show for like three I'm months. I'm sure that'll be great. But um, yeah, yeah. So it might be a little quieter. So anyway, yeah. So we're, we're going to skip next week, but we should be back the week after. We should be the, is it the first week of the month? Yeah, somewhere yeah. in there. I'm brewing some ideas. Oh, Katie's brewing. That's good. There you go. Well, thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody for joining us here on the Fox Wolf Weather Podcast, episode 117. Mark and Katie will be back in a couple of weeks and you're out. Well, I'll see you around town. See you guys soon. You're waiting and hesitating and tell us, please tell us about the weather.